Shalom, Most High Christ bless. Welcome to 15 Minutes with a Captain. I am Captain Zakar to my right. Officer Lyle. All right, let's get straight into it. Today's topic is going, is going to be life after World War III. And I know this is on a lot of people's mind. A lot of people see the end times upon us in the last days and uh, all the prophecies that Christ spoke about coming to pass. I want to know, what's life going to be like after World War III? Right. Well, we got the answers for you. Because uh, a lot of people in Christianity think that a dragon's going to come out the sky and going to eat everybody up. That's not what's going to happen. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 4. Let's read that. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 4. Uh -huh. one, generation, one generation passeth away. And another generation cometh, uh -huh. but the earth abideth forever. So the earth abides forever. A lot of people think when the bombs drop and World War Three pops out that the earth, the world's going to be destroyed, that the nuclear bombs that America and Russia and China have right. is just going to obliterate the whole planet. We're going to go off into space like you see these movies. going to be little uh, uh, earth dust. Right. No, that's not going to happen. The earth abides forever. Understand that. Let's go to 2nd Ezra in the Apocrypha. That is canon. That's right. We don't care what the hell uh, your Christian pastor says. 2nd Ezra chapter 6. Let's read 7 through 9. 2nd Ezra chapter 6 and verse 7. Uh -huh. Then answered I and said, what shall be the parting asunder of the times? So Ezra's asked that what is going to be the end times? Read on. A when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? Uh -huh. And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac and Jacob and Esau were born of him. Uh -huh. Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. So we all know the history back in Genesis. 20 was at Genesis 25 or 21. Yeah, 25. When Jacob came out, he held Esau's heel. That was symbolic. That was uh, for prophecy purposes. For what reason? Read the next verse. For Esau is the end of the world. The end of the world that we now live in, where Esau, the so-called white man, rules the world, where China are uh, uh, superpowers and, and nations upon the earth, and they, they have a seat at the uh, table at NATO. Read it again, verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. The kingdom of, of Israel upon the earth, the kingdom of God, is coming immediately after this world that we know of, the powers, ends. Let's That's prove right. that. Go to Amos chapter 9, verse 8. Because God's very specific on what he's going to do. The end of the world. Whose world is God talking about? Read that, Amos chapter 9, verse 8. Amos chapter 9 and verse 8. So you can understand what life is going to be like after World War III when you put the precepts together. Read that. Behold, the eyes of the Lord, God, are upon the sinful kingdom. The sinful kingdom. What's the most sinful kingdom on the face of the earth? It's known as America. God calls it Babylon the Great. In the Bible, the mystery Babylon, mother of all harlots and fornication, this is the sinful kingdom. Read on. And I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. He's going to do what? I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. Yes, Babylon the Great that you know of as America. God said this sinful kingdom is going to be destroyed, wiped off the face of the earth. Read That's on. Right. Saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. Why? Because after he destroys this place, Jacob is the beginning of that that followeth the kingdom that was promised to Israel. Let's get that uh, in Acts chapter 1 and verse 6. Let's show you that even when our forefather, when Christ walked the earth right after he was resurrected and taken up to sit on the right hand of the Father, our forefather was like, is it that time? Right. Read that in Acts 1 and 6. Acts chapter 1 and verse 6. When the therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Restore what? The kingdom to Israel. The kingdom of heaven is for Israel. Now let's go to Revelation 17 to get some more of of what God is going to do, that the world is not going to end, but 
Babylon the Great is. Read that. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 16. Read. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast. The ten horns is what you know as NATO, the EU. Read on. Which thou sawest upon the beast. These shall hate the whore. They're going to hate the whore. Uh-huh. And shall make her desolate. And naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. And do what? Burn her with fire. Let's find out who that that woman is that that they hate. Jump over to verse eighteen. Verse eighteen. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city. That great city. That great country. Read on. Which reigneth over the kings of the earth. What rule? Who rules the earth? America. Who makes policy all over the earth? America. Who puts embargoes on other countries? America. Who kills uh, the general, the commander of another country just because he decided to take a trip in the neighboring country? <laughs> America. Yep. They do that. They rule over all nations, all kingdoms of the earth. So that's what's going to happen to Babylon the Great. And in the process of that, what is going to be taking place? Give me Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 20, and let's read verse 33 on down. The book of Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 33. Yep. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out, will I rule over you? Will I rule over you? Whether you black people, you Hispanic people, you native Indian people like it or not. You are the Israelites, and God said he's going to rule over you. You his kids. You ain't going to tell your daddy what you want to do. Right. Jump up to verse 32 and see what God says. Verse 32. And that which cometh into your mind shall not be at all. It's not going to be at all. All these, uh, uh, what you call it, these imaginations that you got, you want to do this, you want to live this way, it ain't going to come at all. Read on. That you say. We will be as the heathen, as the families of the countries, to serve wood and stone. We are going to live our life and die as good old Christians in the Christian right. church. I'm going to be a good old Muslim all my life, and I'm going to teach my kids this. They're going to teach their kids this. They're going to teach their kids kids this. Mm -hmm. You ain't going to be worshiping Buddha. You ain't going to be assimilating that blonde hair in your head. Right. Oh, stop. You man wearing dresses. It ain't going to come into your mind at all. All because God said with an arm stretched out in fury, I'm going to rule over you. Jump down to verse 34. Verse 34. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein you were scattered uh -huh. with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. So where you read in Thessalonians about the rapture, that's talking about the Israelites. Go ahead. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. So once this place is destroyed from off the face of the earth, it's burnt with fire. You are going to the wilderness if God deems you worthy enough. Read on. And there will I plead with you face to face, uh -huh. like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. So will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. Now, we all know how God pleaded with the children of Israel in the wilderness. Moses, you can read, he chopped off some heads and put them on a daggone pike right. facing the sun. God opened up the ground and, and killed 250 princes for murmuring against the leadership. God sent some snakes to bite people and kill them with poison. We know how God got down in the wilderness. It's going to be the same way again because there's nothing new under the sun. Read on. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. What is that bond of the covenant? That you Israelites must keep the commandments of God and the faith in Christ. That is the bond of the covenant right. he made with us. Read on. And I will purge out from among you the rebels. You're going to do what? Purge out from you, from among you, the rebels. So even some of us that get delivered from Babylon the Great when it's burnt with fire, you're going to get over and you're going to wish that you uh, could go to Checkers. You're going <laughs> to wish you had a Walmart. Right. You're going you gonna to be out there, oh, I need my hair did. Oh, my hair itch, I need my hair did. Where is Fu Wong? <laughs> God go, he, uh, read it again. And I will purge out from among you the rebels. You're going to be a rebel. You're going to be out there murmuring. You're going to be, oh, I wish I had some good to eat. I wish I had some Lowry's. I wish I had some adobo to season these green beans with. Oh, I wish I had some chitlins. You're going to be a rebel, and God going to purge you out. 
meaning kill you. Read on. And them that trans against, transgress against me, uh -huh. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Go Now go to uh, Isaiah chapter 2. So after all of that is done, you now the you have been proven worthy to enter into the kingdom. You 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 made it past the the final test. You wasn't one of those rebels. You did thus saith the Lord, even in the toughest conditions. Hmm. Right? You did that. What is your reward for that? Read Isaiah chapter two. Let's read one through four. Isaiah chapter two and verse one. Uh -huh. The word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass in the last days. In the when? In the last days. In the last days after World War Three. Read. That the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. Now, all nations are going to flow. I mean, well, you know what that means? All nations are going to keep the commandments of God. That's there right. There ain't going to be no Buddha. There ain't going to be no Allah. There ain't right. going to be no Krishna. No, you're going to be keeping Passover. You're going to be keeping Tabernacles, That's right. whether you like it or not. And if you don't like it, God got a plan for that. It's called 144,000. Read on. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Read on. And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people. Now that's if you don't want to keep those laws, that's what's going to happen. He's going to rebuke many people. And, and I want you to understand how God gets down. He's only got two ways of rebuking you. Life or death. <laughs> right. Right now we are under grace. But when, when God establishes his kingdom back on, on earth, it's going to be two options. Life or death. That's the rebuke. Go ahead. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares. 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 And their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. Now, after after World War Three, there will be no more wars. So you, you guess, look at this. We learned some things away, some learning some things. You know what that means? The people that live in Israel right now are not the real Jews. That's right. They at war all the time with the Palestinians, with the Dago Taliban or whoever else you want to name over there. They always shooting rockets over there. They let you know the real Jews are not in the land of Israel. That's because right. if they were, God says they will not learn war anymore. Yeah. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 60, verse 8. Get some more about that learning war anymore. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 8. Uh-huh. Who are these that fly as a cloud? No, uh, 60 and verse 18. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 18. Uh-huh. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, uh -huh. wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation and thy gates praise. Uh, so there will be no more war. We won't have to worry about violence in the land anymore. Now go to Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11. Let's read 6 through 9. Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 6. Uh-huh. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. Now, you know that don't happen. Wolves don't dwell with lambs. Wolves eat lambs. Read. And the leopard shall lie down with the kid. Uh-huh. And the calf and the young lion and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them. Children are going to have lions for pets. They're going to have uh, leopards for pets. The wolf is going to be the, like a cat. Read on. And the cow and the bear shall feed. The young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. Uh -huh. And the suck and the sucking child shall play on the hole of an ass. Which is a cobra. Go ahead. And the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice. Cockatrice. Cockatrice den. Uh -huh. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So all animals are going to return back to their original state. That's right. When, when the animals feared Adam, when the animals only ate vegetation like the lion eating the straw like an ox, everything's going back to how God 
created it in the beginning when he said it is good. Now let's go to Isaiah chapter 11. Oh, is that where we at now? Yeah, let's go Isaiah chapter 60. And let's read verse 9. Yeah, let's read that. Isaiah 60 and, and 9 on down through 15. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 9. Surely the isles shall wait for me, and the ships of Tarshish, first to bring thy sons from far, their silver and their gold with them, unto the name of the Lord thy God, and to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. Uh -huh. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. So these other nations are going to build up the walls of the kingdom. Go ahead. And their kings shall minister unto thee. That's the presidents. That's another name for king now, just president, prime minister. Read on. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor hath I had mercy How on thee. How did God smote us? It's called Deuteronomy 28. It's called slavery. That's why we under the curses right now, but we're a blessed people. Read on. Therefore, my, therefore thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. Those forces mean the riches. Go ahead. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. That's life after World War III. Every nation that don't want to serve the Israelites, they shall utterly perish. Read on. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together, to beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. Uh -huh. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. All them. those that been persecuting us from the days of uh, Jerusalem when we ran out. All the way back to Babylon, all the way back to the Assyrians. Read on. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. Uh -huh. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Read. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee. Now, I we are forsaken and hated. Nobody wants to be around us unless we dribble in a basketball, throwing a football, right. swinging a baseball bat. Uh, acting or a comedian, that's when they want to make you their friend and be around you. Other than that, they don't want nothing to do with you. You go back to your uh, projects and I'll go back to my suburb. Read on. I will make thee an eternal excellence, a joy of many generations. Jump down to 17. Verse 17. For brass I will bring gold, and for iron I will bring silver, and f and for wood brass, and for stones iron. I will also make thy officers peace, and thy exactors righteousness. Jump down to 19. Verse 19. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, uh -huh. and thy God, thy glory. Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. That's going into understanding. Go ahead. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy morning shall be ended. Read. The, thy people also shall be all righteous. There ain't going to be no wicked Negroes in the kingdom. After World War III, there ain't going to be no more wickedness on the earth. God says all of our people are going to be righteous. You ain't going to have to look over your back. You ain't going to have to be afraid to go That's outside right. when the sun go down. You ain't going to have to hurry up and get in your car. You ain't going to have to lock three, four locks on your door. All the people are going to be righteous. That's a beautiful day right there. Go ahead. Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. Read. A little one shall become a thousand. A little one going to have a thousand children. Go ahead. And a small one, a strong nation. Uh -huh. I, the Lord, will hasten it in this a, time. There's going to be a lot of baby making in the kingdom. <laughs> That's right. A lot of baby making in the kingdom because the women going to be built like palaces. That's right. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 2. Let's go to Revelation chapter 2. We still, oh, don't forget the, the topic of today, 15 minutes, life after World War Three. Revelation chapter 2, 25 through 27. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 25. Uh-huh. But that which ye have already holds fast till I come. Which is the commandments, go ahead. And he that overcometh. And keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. So that thought of all nations going into heaven and we being all equal and holding hands and floating on a, uh, a cloud naked, right. like your little uh, <laughs> Greek baby pictures you be seeing that Leonardo <laughs> da Vinci, 
Drew. That ain't going down. That's right. one people going to be ruling. That's us, the Israelites. And we're going to do what? Read verse 27. Verse 27, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron uh -huh. as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. If you get out of line, we're going we go to uh, flex that rod of iron on you. You're going to be broken. Read on. Even as I received of my father. Now let's go to Micah 5, 15. Micah chapter 5, verse 15. God got something for you. It's called payback. Micah 5, 15. Read that. Micah chapter 5 and verse 15. Uh-huh. And I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen. Upon the other nations. Read. Such as they have not heard. It ain't no, it ain't no movie. It ain't no scary movie. Ain't no uh, drama. Ain't no daggone escape house. Whatever, <laughs> whatever you can think of. It ain't nothing that you can imagine mm. of what God is going to do to the heathen for what they have done to us. Read that verse again. That's music to my ears. And I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen. Now we ain't going to do it. That's God. God said he going to do it. That's right. Read such as they have not heard. It ain't a, it ain't a daggone Avengers movie that you ever seen that can compare to what God can right. do when he step on the scene. God go, God is the ultimate Thanos. <laughs> That's right. Thanos can't, can't even stand in a scene. You remember that scene where Thanos whooped Hulk? That's God. He going to whoop all nations <laughs> at the same time. But he ain't going to do it. He's going to send his son to do it. He's going to send Christ to whoop all nations at the same time. Hey, go to Revelation 13. 9 and 10. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 9. Uh -huh. If any man have an ear, let him hear. If you can understand what's coming out of our mouth, read. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Now we all know we ain't going to play dumb. We only got 15 minutes. We ain't going to play dumb. <laughs> we know who led us into captivity. We know who led the Hispanics into captivity. Bring we know who conquered the Native Indians. Right. We ain't going to play dumb here right now. He that leads into captivity, read. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Uh -huh. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. That's what God's going to, that's what he's talking about in Micah. Such as they have not heard, the Lord's going to render vengeance. Read on. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Here is the patience of them that keep the commandments until the end. Now let's go to uh, Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61, let's read 7 through 9. And, and why, why, why is, is all of that coming? Why, why, why? Let's read that. Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 7. 7 through 9. For your shame, ye you shall have double. And we have been shamed. You know what that shame is? They call us African Americans. Right. They call us Haitians, Jamaicans, Barbadians. They call us Puerto Ricans. Niggas. Uh, Negroes. They call us Gentiles. Jamaica. Whatever you won't call it. Though that's shame. That ain't what God called us. Read on. And for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Uh -huh. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess their double. Read. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. Ooh, go ahead. For I, the Lord, love judgment. He loves judgment. And guess what? The people that run this world have not been judged for what they did to us. Read on. I hate robbery for burnt, burnt offering, and I will direct their work in truth, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. God going to make an everlasting covenant with us again. Read on. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles, Read. and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them, that they are the seed which the Lord have blessed. See, they ain't going to acknowledge us because we can run and dunk a basketball. They going to acknowledge us because we real fast with a 40. They going to acknowledge us because we can hit home runs and make them laugh. And, and dance like uh, 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 what's that? What's that? Uh, 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 what's that dude's name? Buckwheat. We ain't gonna be doing that. No, they're gonna acknowledge us. Those are the people of God, right? That's there. right. Those are the people of God. Let's go to Revelation 21. Let's read three through five. I want to be known for that. Those are the Israelites right there. Look at that bad garment he got. Look at that cape flowing on him, man. Look at that gold crown that he got on. That's right. That he got from Christ. Read that, Revelation 21, 3 through 5. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. So after the earth is cleansed from all its wickedness after World War III, God going to come down. Read on. 
and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And be their God, not everyone's God, their God, the God of the Israelites. Read on. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Now, we need that because right now the Lord is plaguing the world. Mm. He's plaguing the world, and, and the Israelites, we getting caught up. You blacks and Hispanics, we getting caught up right now in the plague of God. With all this, the sin that we have been doing for, for ages is catching up with us. 40%, they say 40% of the corona deaths are black people. Dang. We, and, and we got families, mothers and fathers and sons and daughters out there crying. Read on. And there shall be no more death. No more body counts from the corona. Go ahead. Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall be any more pain, for former things are passed away. Read. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I will make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. These what? These words are true and faithful. So every scripture we just went over today, it is true and faithful. It shall come to pass. That's what life is going to be like That's after right. World War III. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation 